Homemakers, I'm Catherine with Minerva, and today I wanted to share with you a sew along on how to make one of our kits, the Cambria Duster. Let's get to it. Now, before we get sewing, we need to gather up all of our materials. We've made it so easy for you by having kits for these Cambria dusters. Now there are a variety of different selections and fabrics to choose from with these kits. And I personally really loved this navy version. It is nice and lightweight, but it is also warm enough to toss on to keep me warm as well. So if you have got a kit, it will come with absolutely everything that you need to complete this project from the fabric to the printed pattern, as well as the needles that you will need, a couple of spools that match your fabric exactly, because that is always a bother if you order fabric and then you don't have matching thread so that you can get started right away, as well as interfacing and a decent amount of bias tape. That way you don't have to cut your own. It just makes things a lot easier and we match it perfectly with the fabric. That being said, you can go in when you do order the kits and switch it up so you could have a nice pop of color on the inside of your Cambria duster. So wash and dry your fabric in the way in which you're going to launder your finished garment and then go and select your size. Now the Cambria duster comes in a range of sizes and it runs from an extra small through to a 4X. And so what that means is a bust measurement of 32 to 33 inches, all the way up to 53 to 54 inches, and a waist measurement of 24 inches through to 47 inches, and a hip range from 34 inches through to 56.57 inches. So you've got a decent range in size selection. So go ahead and prep your fabric, select your size, and let's get started. Okay, so let's jump right into prepping and cutting our pattern. So the pattern comes with a paper pattern with all of the sizes nested. Now you could cut that out, but my preference is always to trace it out so that you can preserve the original pattern as well as all of the sizes. And if you need to make any adjustments to that pattern, you can do that on the one that you've traced out and make a bunch of notes. So I'm also doing all of the notches, the shorten and lengthen lines, as well as very importantly, the green line because we want to make sure we place it on our fabric that it is on grain. Next, you're going to cut out all of your pattern pieces. I always prefer to use a mat and rotary cutter. I find it is more precise as well as much faster than using shears. Do be sure to mark your notches. You can either clip them like I'm doing here or use Taylor's chalk or a marker if you're using a lighter fabric. So once we have that all cut out, let's get to sewing the collar and the front of our jacket here. So we've got this piece here and we're going to place both sides, right sides together. And we're going to pin along the edge, which brings that collar point, And then this large curved edge, which is the front of our jacket. Now we're going to stitch along here using our seam allowance. And if you'll notice, none of these edges are finished. We are going to finish those a little bit later. So just go ahead and stitch across that large curve and then pivot when you get to that corner and then go all the way back up to the end. Now at the beginning and the end of this seam, you want to make sure that you are back stitching to really lock in your stitches with that. Okay, so now that we have that completed, we are going to turn it right side out. We have a little corner here, which is the point on our collar. We're just going to push that out and give it a nice good press using a decent amount of steam. And this fabric presses very nicely if you happen to be using this one from our kit. And just go ahead and roll it. Uh, you don't have to do any understitching on this, though if you wanted to, you most certainly could. 
So next we are going to take this collar piece and we want to attach them at the neckline. So we've made two of them, a right and a left side. And so that short little bit that we folded out, that is going to be the center back along our neckline. So we're just going to pin them right sides together and then we are going to attach them just like so. So you can see that we have it like this and I am going to press my seams open on this. Now we're never actually going to see these seams so we don't have to finish them. And then I'm going to press it right sides together and you can see there we've got our uh, collar really forming in there. So it should look just like that once you've completed this step with the collar. Now onto step three, sewing the pockets of the jacket. So this funky little piece right here is our pocket. We are going to do a double fold hem, nice and narrow according to the pattern instructions and press it down and then top stitch that in place. So I've got this one here already stitched up so you can see what it looks like from the right side. Next, we are going to place these and we're going to match up that first single notch. There is a double notch below that and that's where the pocket should end. So if you'll notice, we've got the top of that pocket, we've got it already top stitched, and then we fold it under the bottom of the pocket on the other end that is open across the bottom. We're going to pin that in place and then we're going to top stitch and uh, tack along the sides and the top. So it should look just like this. Now, one thing to note, I decided to do two rows of stitches here to mimic the two rows that are on the opening of the pocket. You don't have to do that. I just chose to do that. Now we are going to finish with our bias binding. This is a great finish for this jacket, especially when you open it up and have a nice pop of contrast if you happen to use a contrast bias binding. So open up your double fold bias binding and stitch along that little fold here. So I'm gonna show you a close up so you can see it's open and my needle is going right within that fold. That's exactly where you want it to be. And once you have that stitched, we're going to head on over to the pressing mat and we are going to give it a little press. We're going to fold it back over and then we're going to stitch it. Okay. So once I've got that folded over, it is going to hold quite nicely. And then we can go ahead and we can top stitch that in place once again. So go ahead and stitch that in your stitching close to that folded edge of the bias binding right here. So that's from the front and that's from the back and it looks very nice and seamless. Then we are going to place them right sides together. And now we're going to stitch that seam from the center front, um, upper and lower portions of the jacket bodice. And then we are going to lay this seam flat. So we're going to open it up. If you were to do it from one side to the other, there'd just be too much bulk going on. So you really want to open those seams up. Now onto step number four, sewing the bodice of the jacket. So we have that front. We want to stitch the sides together. So I've already went ahead and done that. Now you can trim that with your scissors or your rotary cutter. I went ahead and used my overlocker and serged the edges because it's nice and quick on that. But if you don't have one, you don't have to. Next, we're going to attach the bias binding the exact same way that we attached the bias binding on when we were doing it individually, only we've got those two layers of fabric, which is why the overlocker really does help because it holds both of those pieces of fabric in place when we're folding it over the edge. It just makes things a tad bit easier to get that stitched in place. So once you've top stitched that, your bias binding should look like this, and we are going to press it towards the pocket side. So head on over to your pressing mat and give it a nice good press and never skip on the pressing. It's incredibly important to press as you go because the direction in which your seams lay are going to play a big part in the overall construction of your garment and will help to make it look more professional. So. Now on to number five, sew the sleeve of the jacket. So with this, we've got our sleeve as well as our body portion here, and we've got the bias binding. So once again, we're gonna do the exact same thing that we've been doing, attaching that bias binding. And I may sound like a broken record, but I am going to show it to you one more time, just in case anyone had any questions on doing this bias binding, because it is a big portion of this pattern. So going in, you attach it on the one side, stitching in that fold, and then right here, I am showing you how I am folding it over and stitching it in place. 
There we go. We have got it stitched in place. We are going to place the fabric right sides together with our sleeve to our bodice of the jacket. And then I am just going to pin this in place so nothing shifts and stitch it. And the next part is the fun part. It's pressing those seams open. And it's so satisfying to press open these seams when they are finished with the bias binding. It just looks so polished and lovely. Number six, we're going to sew the belt ties onto the jacket. So with this, we are going to fold it right sides together and we are going to pin along the long edge. So we want to leave the short edge um, open on that end. And we are going to stitch all the way along here and we've got a nice little um, tube and I am going to use a pin to go in and just push it through. And there's a couple of different devices. You could use a bodkin, um, but a pin is something that most sewists tend to have on hand and it makes it so much easier to get things pushed right through and a lot quicker. I always keep one in my pin cushion. Then I decided to press and top stitch my belt. Now you don't have to do that. I just think it looks a lot nicer and it stays nicer when you wash it. So it is a little tip that you can do as well. Then we are going to pin our belt just over that seam where it intersects that pocket top and bottom of the bodice. Number seven, sew the back to the front. So with this, we have the back of the jacket and we have the front of our jacket. So that is where we had stitched in that collar and where that seam matches up is where we're going to match up the notch on the back of the jacket. And so we are just going to pin all the way along here. Now, the only fiddly area on this is this corner here. And what I found to help is if you clip that corner, it creates a little ease, like a clip and ah, and it just releases it. And it makes it so much easier to be able to actually get around and get a nice, precise seam. So go ahead and stitch that. Don't forget to pivot at those corners. And once it is done, it will look like this. I am just trimming this down ever so slightly um, just because I've got a little bit of hairs that are going on. And then I am going to use my bias binding and I am going to place it along the top the exact same way we have been doing it the whole time. Use your iron to fold over the other edge once you, once you have stitched on that first portion and then top stitch that in place. Now it should look just like this once that is finished and I'm going to flip the front over so you can kind of see how that construction is really starting to come together here. So this is our sleeve portion here and we are just going to do the exact same thing along here. And you can see the sleeve is coming out, I'm just clipping a couple of few stray hairs. And now we're going to sew the side slits. So in this instance, this is where we're going to be attaching the front to the back at the side seams, as well as stitching the arms together, the sleeves together. So first we are going to attach that bias binding, which I have just done. And then we are going to pin the, with right sides together, the sleeves, and we are going to pin down to the notch that we have. So remember when we did those pockets and we had a double and a single notch, that's going to become something that is going to come into play in just a moment here. So grab your pattern piece because we have covered it up with bias binding. And this is the bodice uh, skirt front piece. So we're going to lay it on here and you see those double notches. This is where it comes into play. So we are going to take our tailor's chalk and we are going to mark the top of that double notch. And this is where our slit is going to begin. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start on this end and we are going to stitch all the way down just like you would regular back stitch. And then we are going to stitch going down the rest of it, but with a longer stitch length. So I've started here. I have back stitched. This is my regular stitch length. I do believe it's 2.5 and you can see I'm coming up to my notch. So right here, I am going to back stitch. And I am doing a couple of back stitches. This is going to be an area of potential tension, so I want to make sure that it fits. Then I'm going to increase my stitch length to the highest it will go, and in my case, that is five. And when you get to the bottom, do not back stitch. We are going to be taking these stitches out later. This is a basting stitch. 
then go ahead and press that seam open. This is going to be key in getting a really nice and polished top stitching on your jacket with that side slit. Now, when you get up to the arm, go ahead and take a sleeve roll. If you don't have a sleeve roll, you can roll up a towel. That will really help to get everything eased in. And now we are going to do the other side as well. So whatever you do to the right, you must do to the left side as well. Okay, so now that we have that all completed, we are going to top stitch around here. And so I am going to take a pin and I'm going to mark where that notch is. And then I'm going to mark it on the front of my jacket. Now you could top stitch from the back side, but it is not going to look as good. If you top stitch from the front side, it will look a lot more polished. Then get out your seam ripper and take out those basting stitches that we did below the slit here. We've got everything all top stitched nicely. And the last thing you need to do is give it a nice good press and those side slits are all ready and completed and the side of your jacket is all stitched in place. It's really starting to come together now. Now for step number nine, we're going to hem the sleeves and do the bottom hem. I went ahead and used my overlocker to just trim everything up. I just find it's a lot easier to manage that. And I, I just like it that way. You don't have to, you could use scissors to kind of get rid, rid of any of those little hairs, but I'm doing a narrow fold right here. And then I'm using my tailor's clapper, which is this wooden thing to kind of set it in place. Now I have a hot press ruler or a hot hem ruler, which is basically a piece of metal with the seam gauges on here so that I can hem it with my iron and I'm not melting anything. I find them incredibly handy, but you can't use steam on them. If you do use steam, it fogs up and you get these little water droplets on it, but it's very, very handy in getting a precise hem, especially if you're doing a lot of dresses and it even has a curved side that you can use if you have a circle skirt. So next I am just going along here and pressing all along the bottom of the hem. So once we have that all pressed and placed, obviously we're going to add in a couple of pins so that it stays precisely where we want it to. Now along those side edges, we want to make sure that the sides are folded in. So you can see I'm kind of going in and I'm tucking those edges in so it's nice and finished. We don't want any raw edges showing on that. And then the final front portion here, just going up and I'm going to speed this one up just a little bit more because you've already seen it done twice before along the back and the first front panel here on the jacket. Next are the sleeves. Now we're going to flip it so they are wrong side out and I am going to pop in my sleeve roll because it makes it a lot easier. And then I'm going to fold up just around the amount that I have surged going all the way around. And then we are going to fold the next portion up. So you can see if I have the hot hem ruler, that doesn't work. I just like to use, this is a quilting ruler that I like to go in. You can use a seam gauge as well, but just go in and make sure you have an even seam going all the way around or even hem, I should say for that. And then we can go ahead and top stitch all of this in place at the machine. When I do my top stitching, I tend to like to stitch it from the right side. If it's a thicker material, in this case, I stitched mine from the wrong side because it wasn't too terribly thick and uh, it turned out quite well on that. So now that we have everything all pinned and ready to go, let's head on over to the machine and stitch those sleeves as well as all of the bottom portions of the hem in place. And now for the final reveal. Our Cambria duster. Now this one came together rather quickly and the nice thing about this is it is not lined. So that is an easy hack if you wanted to line it. I really like the idea of bias binding all of the seams. That being said, you don't have to bias bind all of the seams. 
So if you wanted to, you could serge or zigzag those seams rather than bias binding them. And if you decide to make this again with a thicker fabric, that might be a good option because you're adding additional layers with that bias binding. That being said, I really love the touches that the bias binding gives. It also gives a bit of structure to this jacket because you do have those additional layers. It is nice and warm and cozy to put on, and I hope that you enjoy yours as much as I enjoyed making mine and wearing mine out. Now, if you do decide to make this, do use our hashtag for our Minerva kits and hashtag Cambria Duster kit. That way we can see all of the wonderful makes you have made. If you have any questions at all in regards to the sewing process, leave them down below and we will get back to you as soon as we can because we are here to help and make this sewing experience as wonderful as ever. And if you don't already have an account here with Minerva, it's completely free and a fantastic space to go and share all of your wonderful makes. And if you want to check out my personal profile here on Minerva, you can find me at Sheer Stitchery and I'll link that down below as well. Until next time, makers. Bye.